Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. There was a Star Citizen Alpha 3.23 Eva Cardi patch test recently with loads of features in it and I thought we'd chat about the patch notes, my experiences of the few hours that that build was up for, what was there, what worked, what needs more work and what other people were saying as well. And there are some surprises here because there are animals, maybe. Well, they were animals in it. Not maybe. We'll talk about that. So the update was mainly focusing on FPS features here and sort of testing that, uh, but also um, stability. Obviously, Evocati build, that is a huge focus, trying to get all these features in and then get it to wider testing. So they want to make stability a sort of main focus. Full character customizer revamp, the Moby Glass rework, star map, interior map, mini map, EVA tier 2, the new loot screens, um, UI updates with the visor and the lens, the full FPS combat refactor, backpack reloading, ammo repooling, dynamic crosshairs, physical shop UI and server crash recovery. That was the stuff that was listed. They did say that some other bits were in, but weren't ready for testing or are only in a very limited way. That included master modes, the sort of interaction, um, sort of updates, freight elevators, hauling missions, and reputation-based hostility. Now, the build, it was a bit buggy. It was a typical Evocati patch. There were problems with crashing, there were problems with um, doing stuff, um, low frame rates, lo lots and lots and lots of stuff just going, you can't play, get wrecked. Things like getting anywhere near a distribution center would crash the whole server for everyone. FPS AI weren't spawning properly, elevators didn't spawn sometimes, interaction prompts were just missing in a lot of areas, and some panels could become unresponsive, service beacons and mission markers didn't work, so it, it was, a lot of stuff just couldn't be tested. But there were a load of new and good stuff in here as well. They've overhauled water. So Star Citizen 3.23 has overhauled the water rendering and simulation engine. This affects all water in the verse. So oceans, rivers, lakes, uh, water volumes in landing zones and stations, water on ships like the A90 Jump. You get near water with your ship, you're going to see a cool little wake and sort of depression in the water. Um, now, this looks all right at range and actually looks pretty good at range and yeah. But when you get close and um, you're not taking a screenshot or whatever, it's it's not great. Um, it, it does not look great at the moment. I think it's going to look good by the time we get it to the live build, um, but they, they sort of haven't turned everything on here yet. There's a full AI ship combat balance pass. With this update, you should notice a difficulty increase in all AI pilot ships with multipliers being adjusted. Now, because the mission markers weren't working properly and I only saw a little bit of combat um, flying around, wasn't able to test that fully, but it's good to know that that's, that's a thing that is happening. Uh, Moby Glass rework. They are reworking the Moby Glass systems to use building blocks, which will also allow for easy development of Moby Glass apps. Moby Glass looks loads better, and so sort of, they've got a load of apps here. Now, some of these apps, they're not updated properly, but it's sort of a much cleaner, much streamlined, better looking Moby Glass. It's hard to sort of convey it all without showing you, and I can't really show you properly because uh, I think we've had some screenshots and stuff. I'll see if I can grab something uh, up. But yeah, it's notifications appear in your journal. It's a much more clear, cleaner affair. Um, sort of, they've really, really streamlined that, and I'm looking forward to it being fully, fully functional. They made some improvements for the shopping UI stuff. Um, Star Map. So, Star Map rework. Bit disappointed with it at the moment. So they're implementing the new and improved star map, um, improved visuals, improved usability. That's the idea. Streamlined, easier to use, more functionality, searching, all that sort of stuff. At the moment, its functionality is relatively limited. It's slow to respond, and I found it hard to use. Uh, you can set markers though. Um, it just, it's still fiddly. It does not feel pro like they showed at um, Citizen Con. Uh, yeah, it, need, it needs ironing out for sure. Um, Eva Cardi build, hopefully. For the live build, it will work as you would expect it to. Uh, the FPS map system, implementing mini maps for the HUD and interior maps for FPS gameplay. So this is pretty cool. Um, now, CIG teased this on Twitter as well, that you can actually see this on your uh, Moby Glass. You're going to be able to use it to navigate around landing zones. Only a few uh, landing zones and um, other bits are in the mini map section at the moment, but this will propagate to lots more stuff in the future. Lots more icons for signposting stuff like that still needs a bit of refinements but yeah really digging the mini map uh, there's a whole uh, vehicle targeting keybind update um so with a lot of these keybinds going to talk about some more in a minute with fps stuff uh, they are moving towards squadron 42 binds uh, and now with the vehicle stuff it's um t targets the next closest sort of target to your crosshair um if you long press t it will sort of toggle auto target and that will then pick the closest target in 
view, a hostile target in view more specifically. Um, there are a lot of changes as well. E will toggle um, gyro turret. There are things like that. Keybinds, they're going to almost certainly get changed before the live build as well, so I won't talk too much about them. But there are certainly changes here, and they are trying to simplify them, and the ones that you need um, access to for Squadron are probably going to be very similar to the ones you'll need for Star Citizen, and they probably want a one-to-one -one for that for the most part. Item and world interaction. Even though it wasn't ready... This is much improved, even in this build. Um, it's much better than it was previously. I'm able to often grab what I want on a table or a rack or a pile, but sometimes it's still a bit fiddly. Older ships and vehicles seem to have sort of be the worst offenders for interaction at the moment, especially with seat interactions. You could just get stuck in a seat, can't get into it, that sort of stuff. Someone did say that the little item banks are around the Leo stations, but they're not working at the moment. Uh, I didn't see them um, personally, but uh, I suspect they'll be in all the landing zones and stuff like that in the future. This allows you to put sort of FPS items and grab them quickly and easily from these points, um, but also they'll be available at all the other points at that zone. Master modes are functioning to some degree, but not properly. Uh, I used nav mode a lot um, of the time, but there are so many icons and things just on your screen when you're in nav mode at the moment, and I want to be able to turn most of that stuff off. Some people are saying that you weren't able to take off in SCM mode and you have to be in nav mode to get enough power to do that as well. Obviously, I don't think that's intended. Something you might find surprising in this build, though, is that there were missions with creatures in, specifically missions to go and deal with these creatures. Um, so, yeah, I, because the, the waypoints didn't work properly, I wasn't able to find any. But I did hear about other people's experiences with them, and there are creatures in game. I wasn't able to see them, but CIG have been teasing the, the dog, the boids, sort of um, fish, birds, um, rats and stuff like that, and more. So maybe we'll have a, a range beyond just a couple of creatures or a single creature in 3.23. Really great to see that, though. Obviously, that's not something they're testing yet, but it was in the build. There does seem that there's going to be quite a lot of extra stuff in 3.23 that they have not told us. Uh, engineering mode. It uh, looks like that this was sort of in. You could sort of access it. Some people got it working. I couldn't. You have access to like sort of an A2 and a Gladius in Arena Commander in that mode. Yeah, it's not properly functional yet. But yeah, it looks like it's going to be turning up soon. There has been an absolutely massive FPS combat overhaul. So there is a huge amount of weapon balance changes. I think every weapon in the game has had its stats updated in some way. Most weapons got a sizable damage increase. And then there's been lots of tweaks to aim down sights, iron sights, um, spread, recoil, explosion range has been increased. This is likely to change more before live release, so I won't go into a huge, huge, huge amount of detail here. I did play around with a couple of the shotguns. They actually felt pretty good. CIG said that the overall intention for many combat updates in 3.23 is that the player is slowed down in firefights when committing to a fight, but is still safe to retreat during a fight. Adjustments have been made to make the overall experience more consistent. Weapons should no longer get stuck in the falling pose. Force reactions have been adjusted so FPS weapons will not cause staggers. When moving diagonally, players will now use strafe movement values. Body mapping has been adjusted so that shoulder shots will no longer count as headshots. Equipment will no longer block bullets, such as backpacks, weapons, and things on your armor. So bear that in mind. That is a big change because you will not suck in as much damage. You will not be able to suck that stuff up. Um, bullets will no longer damage multiple body parts for a singular player. Meaning, if a shot went through the player's arms and chest, it would damage the same target twice. It will still damage two different players as expected, though. Naked damage multiplier on the player has been reduced by 50%. Attachments will work with the new procedural recall system. The majority of weapons now feature new iron sights. They sort of also brought weapons up, which is pretty cool. Uh, new procedural aim down sight animations on all new weapons have been implemented. Spread has been fully removed from all aim down sights and there were various issues causing hit reg issues um, and they've been fixed. Due to the changes with projectiles no longer dealing damage to the same character multiple times, snipers will no longer one shot on a body shot. It can still hit multiple players though. Uh, snipers in general have a more drastic projectile drop. No sniper scopes are able to auto zero anymore. Zeroing ranges have been adjusted on sites. Uh, with item blocking being removed, SMGs are now even more powerful as they are typically in uh, close quarters combat environments. 
to compensate for this, SMG recalls should now be more consistent when firing, leading to their range being increased. There are new scopes and sight updates, uh, so scopes and sights will no longer have blinding reflections on them. Um, optics now increase aim down sight time, 15% for 1 to 3 times, 20% for 4 times, however the 8 and above remain the same. They already had very long um, aim down sight times. Scopes that are 8 times and above will have glint visible to players when a scope is targeting them, so when you are aiming down sights and pointing at someone. Um, the solution is, if you hate glint, use 4 times scopes or only aim down sights when taking a shot. Optic zoom has returned on multiple scopes. Armor will no longer block the player's vision when aiming down sights. Uh, Underbarreled laser point is now decreased spread by 12.5%, um, so they have more of a purpose. Uh, yeah, as I said, yeah, aim down sights. That no, no spread, no spread there. Although you do have sort of recoil patterns still, um, so sort of bear that in mind. It's the spread and recoil two different things. Uh, there are some FPS control. Keybind changes, sort of multi-tool gadget is now G, consumables are Q, grenade to E. E, that's going to get me killed a lot, right? You're going to be using your grenade. Um, crouch is C, prone is left control. So, they're going to be changing some of these again next build, so don't worry too much. Grenades are going to go back to G. The multi-tool uh, or whatever uh, else you have in that utility slot is 5, uh, again, for the next build, apparently. So, bear that in mind. Things like this are getting changed a lot. I just thought I'd tell you about there are yet again more buttons changes. However, they are trying to push them towards Squadron 42 and getting this all a lot more streamlined and feeling like a modern shooter in the places it should feel like a modern shooter. But yeah, it was buggy. There were problems. There were a lot of crashes. I couldn't play for more than like 20 minutes at a time, unfortunately. It was pretty unstable, uh, but that's part of the course for Eva Cardi builds. They're going to be testing more features. They're going to be doing a load of bug fixes. They're going to be getting a lot of stability testing in here. And then potentially um, next end of next week, and um, we could see a wider PTU test. It's going to be dependent on whether or not they can get uh, most of those features in and in a stable fashion um, for, before it goes to a wider audience. Pretty exciting with creature missions, though. That's sort of like an extra bonus with 3.23. Really, really looking forward to engineering mode being tested to some degree and that star map working a lot better. And at the moment, it's, it's still pretty broken. Uh, or it, Broken is the wrong sort of word. It just didn't feel good. Um, it felt like the old star map still um, with a, a, a new veneer on it. But yeah, th this patch looked like it was much more focused on getting those Squadron 42 FPS uh, updates in and, and similar things with interaction rights. But although they haven't started testing interaction properly. But we'll see it in the next build, almost certainly. Anyway, I'm interested to know if you are playing in the Evocati build. You can actually talk about it. So what do you think? Are you excited for animals turning up in 3.23? Are you looking forward to this going to first wave PTU or, or open PTU or to the live build? We should see it live in April. 3.23, that is the plan. Um, obviously, that could change, but do you think we will actually see it for the full release um, of 3.23 in April or, or not? Whatever your thoughts or questions, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Let me set you a riddle. You have a fox, a chicken, and a sack of corn, and you have to transport them from one side of the river to the other using a rowing boat. You can only carry one of these with you back and or forth. You can't leave the chicken and the fox together, that's mad, nor can the chicken be left with the grain, nor all three together without you. How do you do it? With NordVPN.com slash BoardGamer. Turn that bad boy on and just set your location to the other side of the river. Done. Not only do you have all your wares, but also you can get around regional content blocks, have your data encrypted for more security. It's easy to toggle on and off. It's non-invasive. It helps you with other riddles as well. If a sphinx is asking you, what goes on four legs in the morning, two at noon, and three legs in the evening? NordVPN, get it now from the links below. Every month we have a giveaway for a ship, and for March we are giving away an Argo raft with persistent hangars, freight elevators, and hauling missions coming with Alpha 3.23. What better way to experience that type of gameplay than with your own hauler? All you need to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of our videos made during the month. A single comment per video counts, so get involved with watching all my videos for more chances to win. There's more details in the description. Also, I won't ask you to contact me on Telegram or anything like that. This is my only YouTube account I will use to talk in my comments as well. Occasionally there are scammers about. I don't want people to get tricked.
A massive thank you to everyone that supports the channel, be that liking videos, commenting on them, sharing them. There are also people that go the extra mile. These are amazing people that become Patreons or use the join button under my YouTube videos to become channel members. You'll occasionally get some exclusive content, Discord roles and behind the scenes posts. It's those people with those memberships that allow us to make the daily Star Citizen content that we do. So please consider joining those awesome folks as well. Thank you for watching until the very end. It is genuinely appreciated and I hope you have a great March.